Hello and welcome to the Daily Meal for Tuesday the 1st of March 2022 and we're going to start off with this um, the under 23 suffered a massive uh, defeat to QPR today this is from milwc.co.uk Mill under 23s were defeated 4-1 by QPR in the Professional Development League on Tuesday afternoon George Walker scored to half the deaths of it after the Isles went into a 2-0 lead at the club Arlington training ground, but two further goals saw the strong home side ease to a comfortable victory. Next up for your under 23s is a trip to a Wigan Athletic on Monday, the 21st of March. And the team was Gilmore, Smith, Adam Malachi, Allen, Penny, Tobolodge, Walker, O'Brien, Leahy, Abdul Malik, and Davis. And the SA came on for Abdul Malik in the 75th minute. Subs not used or F Zella. Hammond, Cotton and Daly. So there you go. Uh, pretty young side, especially the bench there. And I think QPR and uh, maybe one or two first teamers in, in, in the side coming back. So heavy defeat, but not unexpected. So here is the manager, Nugent, Kevin Nugent, on the defeat. What's he, what's he got to say? Kevin Nugent explained how Tuesday afternoon's 4 1 Professional Development League. Defeat to QPR was a tough day and challenged his side to dig in and find a result going forward. The under-23 suffered a second consecutive four-goal loss in West London after a defeat at Bristol City last week with the manager telling Millwall FC how his outfit came up against a Rangers side pack with championship experience. Yes, indeed. It was a, another tough day for us today, he said. We, we were a really young side up against a strong QPR team with experienced professionals in it. It was a bit too much for us, but the lads put in a good shift. We had a little spell for 20 minutes in the second half in which we got a goal back, but they then scored again not long after that, and that was a game changer. I'm disappointed, but the lads have got to make sure that when they're in a dip in form as they are now, they've got to dig in and find a result. Um, yeah, uh, I went to the... So this picture here is from the... I think it's from the, the QPR game earlier this season at the Den which I think was the first game back uh, after all the lockdown bollocks and we absolutely smashed QPI and made them look a bit silly so I think maybe um, a bit of uh, revenge there they put out a couple of first teamers just to uh, tip the scales um, tip the balance on their, their side not only that but with the fucking around with like all week um, they've been saying about them, you watch on recast watch on recast and they will stones ground get shut down and they don't find an alternative venue to show the game on, on recast no why could they not have played the game at loftus road and, and shown the game on recast i mean qpr um kind of uh made themselves a little bit silly there a bit mickey mouse to be honest with you with the way they they um conducted all of that stuff um so and and now here when they put like uh, a couple of first teamers in to beat me all under 23s because last time out when we played them at the 10 we absolutely smashed them off the park so there you go what are you gonna do about that um that's what uh that's what some teams kind of stoop to but what can you do what can you do so moving on to this this is also from milfc.co.uk so this kind of perplexed me to stay, um, when this got got out uh, published this morning. Uh, so tickets, uh, Blackburn Rovers versus Millwall rearranged fixture on sale to season ticket holders and members. And I'm scratching my head, saying, "Oh, what? Wait, what? Hang on a minute." Uh, didn't, so this is the game that was postponed, and you said all the tickets um, were still valid for the re rearranged game. So I'm like, "What the fuck are you selling?" Maybe I, we probably didn't sell out because it's, it's, it's a long northern trip. Although it was on a Saturday. Um, how many did we take? I think it was like 400 they said. Um, like 400. Um, so I imagine we've probably got more tickets than that. So Mill will head back to Ewood Park for a rearranged Skybet Championship fixture on Tuesday the 8th of March. Uh, kick off 7.45pm. Tickets are now on sale to the season ticket holders and members. Uh, supporters that require a refund on their match tickets from the original fixture will need to return the tickets to the ticket office by 2 p.m. on Monday, the 7th of March. So, I, I assume is that in person or 
can you post them in? But um, it seems uh, so. You've got to make a trip down there to get just to get your money back. Um, what if not being funny? But if you bought it online, why can't they just? Do they not? Some sometimes they publish your name on the tickets. Can they not just cancel that? ticket if it's got that name on I suppose they don't want dupes out there because you could probably just get your money back and then sell the ticket to someone and then they'll guard there there are some scumbags that would, that would probably do that and sell it onto a Millwall fan and the Millwall fan gets up there with a ticket and finds out it's not valid and it won't go through the ticket turnstiles and sadly you, you, you wouldn't believe it but there are some people out there that would do that not many but a few um, so I suppose they want them back, so they don't. That doesn't happen. Uh, if you are attending the rearranged fixture, your original ticket will remain valid, even if you entered the turnstile. He would park. Uh, if you no longer have your original match ticket, please contact the ticket officer. So that duplicate ticket can be arranged for you to collect from the away ticket office at he would park on Tuesday evening. Uh, tickets are priced at twenty quid and below, which is it's not a bad price to be honest here. But when you, you're looking at um, a fair old amount of time and money to get out there on a uh, weekday on a Tuesday night and then probably coming back and having to uh, maybe have uh, Wednesday off of work or whatever or something like that so like I said this was kind of perplexing then you read down and you see at the bottom it says um, tickets will go off sale at 2 p.m. on Monday the 7th of March we have received an additional 400 tickets for this fixture so they sold the 400 tickets to um, Millwall fans that went up there on the day and they've been given an extra 400 which is um, kind of weird but I suppose um, is there a demand are people clamoring for these tickets now now we are in a run of form with four wins in a row um, we're going for our fifth win in a row at Reading. It will be a sold out crowd in the away end. Um, we had something like 2,000 tickets given to us. They sold out. We got 500 more. So there's going to be 2,500 mil fans in the away end at Reading. Um, and there's a lot of people asking for spares for Reading already. Um, and can't blame them. It's, it's, it's a pretty decent day out. Uh, it's not that far to travel. It's an easy journey. Um, just get the uh, overground from Rob Rive to Clapham Junction, get a train from Clapham Junction to... I think you can get the train straight from Reading to there. I, I went there like that way before. I've been to Reading, it was, it was all right. Um, I think that was a night game as well. And uh, trains coming back from, from Reading for some reason is kind of weird. They got up to like 1 or 2 a.m., 2 um, which was kind of weird to me. But living in London when the train shut down at 11.30, and you go out into the sticks to Reading and the trains are running from 3am which was weird but I suppose because they've got to go th they're trying to go to, through um, Paddington and um, Heathrow and all that shit I suppose they do run but there you go if you want to go to Blackburn next Tuesday uh, if there are 400 tickets available to you uh, you will need to be a member of course and they're on sales to season ticket holders and members right now. So there you go. If you if you're up for that, and maybe get involved. There's a seven hundred and nine seven hundred and ninety six views on this post alone. So maybe there is some kind of demand, um, especially if we win at Reading. Um, if we win at Reading, have to get five in a row. There may be some demand for people traveling up to Blackburn on the Tuesday um, to see the six in a row possibly which would be um, amazing and then the Saturday after we got kids for a quid so you're saving money on that if you go to that game um, there you go there's uh, tickets are available if you want them so let's move on to this now this is uh, Gary Rowett talking about Tyler Burry being linked with Brentford. So this is from LondonNewsOnline.co.uk. A Mill boss Gary Rout reacts to winger Tyler Burry being linked with Brentford. Uh, Mill manager Gary Rout says he is not reading too much into a national newspaper linking Tyler Burry with Brentford over the weekend. 
former AFC Wimbledon youngsters broke into the first team picture on a more regular basis of late and scored in back to back championship matches against QPR and Derby County. It was claimed that the Bees were monitoring Bury 21, and it followed Rowett's comments to the South London Press last week that the attacker could put himself on the radar of other clubs if he could chain together impressive performances. Uh, Rowett, when asked about the talk of Brentford interest, told our paper, I think that's a little bit too easy for my liking, that I mentioned after the last game against Derby, that it won't be long before clubs are looking at Tyler and a throwaway mark when we were talking about Jed Wallace and his contract. And then the next thing you know, lo and behold, the Premier League club has been monitoring him even before he's played for us. I'm not reading too much into it. It's a young player who's done really well. He's a young player I really, really like. I've shown that in the last 18 months by sending him out on loan and not bringing, him, bringing in Oli Burke to replace Tyler Burry. And Tyler Burry's only playing because it's caused Oliver Burke and Luke Freeman got injured. Yeah, sure, mate. Sure, buddy. Sure thing, buddy. He's shown he's ready, but he's got to knuckle down and be a really good player for us before I think that anyone will seriously consider him for a Premier League move. The Geezer scored two in two um, games, and you still got Rao saying he's got knuckle that knuckle down. Like, fucking hell, dude. Sometimes you need flair players in a team, yeah? You, and not everyone can be a Murray Wallace and, and a, a grinder and a, someone who... who, who um, Grinds it out on the pitch, you know. You need flair players, and like Christoph Kinne in the past. Um, not everyone's got to be battle axe and doing all kinds of weird shit, but uh, well, not according to Gary Rat. So he is a young player, so that has got to be his aim. But to get somewhere like that, either with or without us, you have to do all the right things. Speculation doesn't get you there. Hard work, improving, being humble. And being a good teammate, showing your quality when you need to, is what you need to do. The rest will take care of itself. I don't read too much into that speculation, but at the same time, I can understand how he might have caught the eye of at least one or two clubs monitoring him. That's what everyone does with young players and that type of athleticism. So there you go, uh, Rowett digging him out, saying, uh, yeah, don't worry about playing the Premier League. You need to work harder, because it's not good enough for you scoring two and two goals, or two goals in two games. Um, you need to actually um, just run around more, run around and uh, tackle more, because that won't get you injured, and, and sitting on the sidelines like all the other players. Gary out right there, coach of the year. Uh, so now we've got, going back to Mill FC, we've got four stories from Mill FC uh, club website today. Um, they seem to have picked up the mantle of the Lone Watch. The news of Den had dropped it. Don't know why. Probably didn't get the views. Um, and it wasn't worth the effort that, that they had to do. Um, collating all the information from the various players. Um, so the club have picked it up. Because apparently they do, they do this stuff anyway. They have a WhatsApp group or whatever. And they, they'll be... When they said Kevin Nugent on the um, Paul Robinson, they talked to the, the online players and see how they got, or the younger ones, see how they're getting on, how they played, how they, how they feel after the game, and all that jazz. So the clubs obviously has that information. They probably just pass it on to um, the press guy, and the press guy writes it up. So the club have taken on the mantle. So here we go, the latest loan watch. And Joe Wright makes his Cray debut finally after the game was postponed because of weather and stuff. And this has had uh, nearly a thousand views, so not too bad, not too bad. Um, Joe Wright excelled on his debut for Cray Wanderers as the Kent outfit drew 2-2 at Horsham on Saturday afternoon, making a string of fine saves according to the Wanderers match report. Uh, the goalkeeper endeared himself to the visiting fans despite the concession of two goals in the Hishmian Premier League affair. Elsewhere, both Junior Tenzi and Arthur Penny were involved in two undefeats for, Bra for Dartford and Welling United, uh, respectively, at Hungerford Town and at home to Hemel Hempstead Town. Uh, while Isaac Loffey, Alex Mitchell and Dan Moss were all absent from their clubs at the weekend. Yeah, that's kind of very worrying. I don't know if they're injured or, or what. There has been a, obviously a change of management, management at Leighton Orient. Alex Mitchell and Dan Moss not involved. Um, is that... Because they got dropped from by their new manager or what? 
I think Isaac Olofi may be injured again. He did go off injured earlier. Uh, he got subbed off, uh, and then in subsequent subsequent games he hasn't been seen. So it says he's injured again, which is a shame. Um, he does seem to be pick up uh, little injuries here and there, which is not good. Um, and they, they, so Sutton United without Alofi, um won four one against Scunthorpe United at home, and Leighton Orient lost again. They lost one 0 at home to Carlisle United. Uh, without obviously Mitchell and Moss and the upcoming fixtures here of these are the players currently out on loan we've only got one down to seven now um, Alex Mitchell, Dan Moss now these games happen tonight, today I can tell you Dan Moss I believe was on the bench I don't think he got on so obviously um, not being left out on uh, kind of um, footballing reasons it would seem um, he didn't get on. He was an unused substitute. Alex Mitchell not seen. Um, Junior Tenzia playing for Dartford against Brentford B in the London Senior Cup, which is a great idea by Brentford's B team playing in the uh, a local London FA Cup competition, and that was played tonight as well. And unfortunately, uh. Dartford lost 2-0 and Junior Tenso, Tenzio went off injured in the 70th minute which is uh, not good for him at all so there you go um, so let's just have a look I wanted to show you this because this is uh, quite interesting so this is uh, the match report from CraveWanderers.com about um, Joe Wright uh, situation and um, you can see how long it is. It's this is what you you get in a non-league. You get these volunteer. Um, so this is by someone calling themselves Mark Hunt. Mark Hunt. I, I think that's a, a real name. If not, um, I'm I've been got there with a fake name. Uh, Mark Hunt. Yeah. Um, so you can see here. See how long this match report is. With with um, photos as well stitched into it, this is non-league enthusiast putting probably doing this for free, doing this for love of the game, love of writing, writing up this really long match report um, for the uh, Cray Wanderers website, and I've just um, Control F. Right, so so one's debutants goalkeeper Joe Wright. Um, Wright came in for Nick Blue, who was, who was with Cray's cover for the injured Bailey Vos. Okay, um, an exceptional save from Joe Wright, who tipped the ball over the bar. Um, before Wood tick clean strike which went wide but the other end White excelled again when he had to push behind a close range effort from Richards um, then another header from Harding was well gathered by Wright um, this is uh, pretty comprehensive here uh, Cook came close with a shot that went wide of the goal and then Wright made a good save to push the ball away from a cross shot uh, great, uh, a lot of great effort expended from the ones on the day Wright looked a fine Prospecting goal made three very good saves and he's handling excellent. So there you go. Um, they seem to have uh, taken to him quite well there. Decent display against uh, away to Horsham. Is it Horsham United? Um, but there you go. So this was an away game as well. So it's Craig Wanderers, Craig, uh, Wanderers fan. Went away to Horsham. Uh, took the pictures, wrote all this up, published it on the website. Isn't that fantastic? What a what a dedicated fan that is, huh? Mr. Mark Hunt. Mark Hunt. Um, I don't know if he's the brother of Mike Hunt. Maybe, maybe he is. I don't know. But there you go. And with that, that that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.